Coming up, Priscilla Shire sits down with This Is Us star Chrissy Metz to discuss her new faith-based movie, Breakthrough. Yeah. Why do you think that is, that this is an important time in the industry where faith matters and is working on screen? Well, I think that while, you know, works of art should be created in every way, I think that if you can create a work of art based on a true story or something that is inspirational, that derives hope, that reminds you of our purpose and our path, mm. you it's like you're getting the best of both worlds. Yeah. And that there's so many people that are hungry for that. They are. You know, especially now. It's very timely because we're going through a lot. There's a <laughs> lot of yes. turmoil, a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow, and um, we're all looking for something. Mm -hmm. And so whether, you know, we're an executive or, you know, we're from a small town mm. and all the, you know, in between, we're all the same. Yeah. We're all the all same. All the same. Yeah. All the same. And it's all coming up next on the Breakthrough Interview. I'm grateful for my son, for I know that you've created him for a purpose, thus far only known to you. <laughs> Love you. Have a great day. He's been underwater for 15 minutes. No one can survive that long. It took a mother's strength. Please send her Holy Spirit to save my son. To bring her son back. We've got a pulse. I don't believe your son will survive the night. I'm not giving up on him. When no one else believes. You need to be honest about John's chances. He will speak life over John. Believe the impossible. We will remember what we witnessed today. There's simply no explanation. Breakthrough. Rated PG. Wednesday, April 17th. Only in theaters. Chrissy Metz, you are lovely. You really are. You're mm -hmm. an incredible person. And... We can feel that on the other side of the screen when we watch you. It's not just your character that we love on this number one hit show that you're a part of called This Is Us, but there's something about the woman that's playing the part that just kind of endears us all to you. Oh, so thank thanks you. for sitting down with me for a few minutes. Oh, it's my pleasure. Because I kind of want to know the deal about Chrissy. Yeah, I'm here to tell you. You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Tell us where you were raised. Tell us where your life sort of started. Sure. Uh, so I'm currently one of five. I was the youngest. Um, and I was born in Homestead, Florida, but my father was in the Navy. Okay. So he was stationed in Japan. So we lived there for the first nine years of my life and then moved back to Gainesville, Florida. My parents divorced and my mom remarried and I hung out in Gainesville until I found my first manager at an open okay. call that my sister was actually begging me to take her to and um, it's so funny because there was a woman sitting across from me while I was filling out all the paperwork and she said so uh, you know I taught at your high school and I was like no you didn't <laughs> she's like yeah I was in the drama department I was like oh I wasn't in the drama department so I don't know you and it was so interesting because I'm filling out the paperwork and then she said, well, I think you should audition. I think you're here for a reason. And I'm like, I, I'm afraid of my own shadow. There's no way I'm auditioning. <laughs> my sister was interested in doing like print modeling. Yeah. And uh, so my first manager ends up coming out and she's like, so who's the guardian? And I said, me. And she's like, what are you doing here? I said, oh, I was just taking my sister. She's like, really? You don't sing? You don't act? And I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. So they're just like pulling you yes. in, pulling yes. you in. And I thought, uh, I can't, I'm not, I'm not formally trained. Like I sing in choir in school, but yeah. you know, it's not the same thing. And what? And uh, I'm scared. What yeah. is it? What does it all mean? And so uh, lo and behold, my sister nudges me and she's like, Chrissy, you do sing, sing for her. And I'm like, Great. I mean, we've seen you be a dem. I mean, we're a dem. <laughs> Which was very fun. That was very fun. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, long story short, she ended up signing me. We ended up coming out to LA, and I was pursuing acting. Did both of you come out to LA? No, my sister ended up um, staying home, okay. going to school. She's a, a mother of almost four now. She's, wow. Yeah. That's incredible. So I know. It's such an interesting yeah. turn of events. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I lived out in Los Angeles for some time. I lived in a two-bedroom apartment with the six girls on air mattresses. Did you it was say like, six girls? Yes, I did. Three to each room. Yeah. So it was like um, acting summer camp. Um, although, but this is what you wanted. Like it right. was what you were pursuing oh, and yeah. you wanted it that bad. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and then my agent needed an assistant. And so my manager said, you're going to go there and you're going to find out all the details. You're going to submit people. You're going to learn things. And I'm like, 
Ooh, wait, 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 what about me? Like, what about my what life? What about like, my acting career? This is what I came out here to do. Like, I left everything I know. I didn't, I did not even go on the interstate prior to moving to Los Angeles. Okay. Like, <laughs> white knuckling it to, uh, you know, acting <laughs> class. Oh, so, um, then for nine years I became, and I, of course, started as an assistant, junior agent, and then a talent agent. So a real live desk job. A real And were you life. discouraged by that? Did sure. it just seem like the biggest detour? This has nothing to do with Absolutely. what, well, it's connected to, but it's not what you really wanted. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you uh, the connection that I have with you. Yeah. So my brother calls me one day and he goes, Priscilla, I saw Chrissy Metz at somewhere I was singing, my brother sings, and, um, and she sa he said to me, when we saw each other, she just gave me the biggest hug. And I said, why is Chrissy Metz hugging you? And he said, because when I moved out to Los Angeles, which he's been there maybe 10 years now, he said, Chrissy was my first agent. Yeah. And so you've known my brother all these years. He said, I knew her before I even knew she wanted to be an actress. I know, I know. <laughs> and when I made the correlation, when you told me that, I was like, what? It took me a second to understand. I was like, wait, the Anthony Evans? Like, what? what? <laughs> um, and this is what he told me about you. He said the humility and kindness that she had mm. when now I hear you were in a job that was not your preference, you were in a season of life that to you seemed like a total derailment from the plan. Yeah. The humility, humility and kindness that you had then is the same sort of humility and kindness that you have now. Wow. And I think that speaks to the kind of integrity and character that you have as a person. Oh, thank you. Because so many people, if their life's not going the way they want it, they lose humility and kindness. Yeah. Or if their stuff is going the way they want it, like if everything's going great, well, humility goes out the door and they're not kind to other people. So my question to you yeah. is, in both spheres and in both seasons, what do you think anchors you internally so that Chrissy is who Chrissy is no matter, regardless of what circumstances are like? I think, uh, well, I think having uh, a detour, like being of service through being a talent agent, really helped me to express my humility. Yeah. And that it's not about my ego or my pride, it's not about what I want, it's about what I'm here to do, what I'm placed on this earth to do. And I realized that maybe this is the season, as you say, of just being of service. Mm. And also learn and that the, that's not wasted. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. You've got to put in what you want to take out, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and you can't keep anything you don't give away. Mm. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to help people do what I want to do until I can do it. And then also in turn, I learned so many lessons about patience, about perseverance, about determination, um, humility. Yeah. And um, really, really understanding what it means to want something for the right reasons, mm. you know, because it wasn't about fame and fortune and never has been for me. I just, as a little girl growing up in a small town, being different from all my friends, I never had anyone to relate to. Okay. And I wanted to either relate to somebody or have somebody relate to me. I just, I wanted to feel less alone. And I found Why that, did you feel alone? Why did you feel isolated in your youth? You know, I, I just wasn't like any of my friends. Okay. Um, I also became the middle child. My mom had two young Younger, um, I have two younger sisters, and I just sort of felt like, hey, you remember me? Like, uh, you know, a little displaced. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and um, you know, I was always the chubbier girl out of all my friends, and um, I just it, like in, just inside, I felt different. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now I know that's a great thing, and it, it's <laughs> not. It's not something I should have ever been ashamed of. Yeah. Um, but I just felt things very deeply. Yeah. And I was always sort of in touch. Um, and you know, when you're nine, 10 years old, you're not necessarily you, in touch. You don't know anything about well, all that. You yeah. Even, yeah. So um, I just always wanted, and I think that's the reason why I wanted to be an actress was like, let me love you and you can love me and it can be cyclical and it can be wonderful and this is how we should live our lives. Yeah. So, and you know, I just wanted to help people feel less alone because I wanted to feel less alone. Okay. I've got to ask you about body image because I think mm. that's so important. So yeah. you just mentioned, you know, as a young girl, we can't even grapple with the fact when we're not included, there's this homogeneous sameness that's celebrated that, you, that man, you better look like us and yeah. fit, talk like us and act like us if you're going to fit in and there's going to be some inclusivity there. But it, it's like we have to mature enough, take some years yeah. to <laughs> just be okay. Yeah. You know, I remember being in my youth, I felt kind of displaced because a lot of times I would be the only girl of color amongst a group of of mm -hmm. others and you know my hair wasn't like their hair it right. was wild and unruly and afro-y mm -hmm. and I felt like I needed to 
make it like yeah. everybody else is, or I was just a little taller than all the other girls, or a little wider in the hips than all mm. the other girls in the cheerleading squad. And it, instead of celebrating that, right. I just sort of you kind of shrink back into this little cocoon. So talk about that trajectory in your life. Like, what are your insecurities still now to this day that you're grappling with? And what things have you learned to actually accept as, you know what, this is a, this is a gift. This mm -hmm. is something that God has given me a uniqueness that I can actually use yeah. to glorify him and to help others to appreciate their uniqueness. Yeah, I think a lot of that is my sensitivity. I've always been very sensitive. Okay. And some people are like, oh, you're overly sensitive. Like you cry about everything. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Because yeah. I feel things in, in a very deep way. And I so was, other uh, things that other folks would brush off. Oh, sure. You're still hanging on oh, to sure. it. Oh, sure. Which yeah. doesn't serve me in, in some aspects. But in a lot of ways, like my career, it helps me to empathize. Because, girl, you can cry on a dime, honey. <laughs> yes, I can. You, you have all of us crying. Yes, yes, I can. It's funny because Devon said to me, you want to save that? And I was like, oh, there's plenty where that comes from. <laughs> so don't you worry. He's like, you want to save that yeah. for the close -up? Yeah, exactly. No. Seriously. And I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm just getting, I'm just getting started. He's like, okay. Getting the wheels oh, turning. Yes. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. don't you worry. Um, and I think that that was always something that I felt different about. And then of course being a chubby girl when all my, you know, yeah. all my friends are shopping at Wet Seal and like, you know, all these cute little stores. And, uh, uh. and I'm like, I'll wear your necklace. Like, let's share accessories. <laughs> Let me borrow uh, that yeah, yeah, bracelet like, right I can there. wear the earrings, great. Yeah, yeah. And um, then I realized, I mean, of course, as an adult that like, I'm not defined by my body as we're great. not defined by any number, be that in your bank account or on the scale or where we come from, mm -hmm. or any of those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took me a long time, and I'm still oh, yeah. dealing and grappling with that yeah. because it's hard when we are a society that communes, you know, as a species, like that's what we do, and we want to feel a part of. And when we feel different in any regard, you're like, am I, is there something wrong with me? Yeah. No, no, nothing at all. Like you were perfectly made. Yeah. And like we all have our issues that we get to sort through and we get to learn through and that becomes, you know, our tragedies become our triumphs. And so it's been a long journey for sure. Yeah. But I always say that like if I can't accept who I am right now, I can never get to the place I want to be, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm constantly in this state of not enoughness. And so then you don't even make space for improvement should you want to improve or feel like you need to. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it's a process. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. you know, um, the only reason why I would ever even think about losing weight or being in better shape is for health reasons. Yeah. That's the only, re I mean, as far as being a different size or any of that, I don't, I don't care. Like, you don't really, no, you I, don't care. No. You're good. Yeah. Like if it was like, okay, if I knew that I was going to be healthy for the rest of my life and none of this has an impact on anything else, who cares? Yeah. If I feel good, if you have to feel good in your skin. And I've met so many people who are size zero, who are like, oh, I completely relate to your story. And I'm like, wait, wait, how? <laughs> Tell me this. What are you even talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? Be quiet. About? <laughs> because it's, the thing is like the food yeah. is not the issue. It's, you know, it's a symptom. Yeah. And just if you under eat, overeat, if you use, fill the yeah. void with anything. Yeah. Attention, social media, drugs, alcohol, whatever. Yeah. We're all trying to fill a void. And so my life, I, I had to overcome a lot and I used food to cope. Yeah. And we all use something to cope. And so it's all, you know, reprogramming and, and retraining your, your mind because it's, it's it an really obsession is. of the mind. It's, it has nothing to do with, yeah. you know, your physical And you're body. right. We all have a void that yeah. we're trying to fill. Yeah. And we see that so much really in the characters of This Is Us. Mm -hmm. We see mm -hmm. all of them sort of grappling with their own little yeah. vacuum from right. their dad, loss of their dad or whatever that they're trying to deal with. And we, we've got a movie to talk about, but <laughs> I've got, we have to ask you about This Is Us because sure. you went from desk job and then was This Is Us sort of, I was about to say, then all of a sudden. No. Okay. No, so no, no. Tell, give us some steps about how you sure. got to where you are now. Sure. Okay. So uh, for about nine years, I was a talent agent and I had uh, friends in the business who, if an audition or two would pop up, and I mean once a year, yeah, yeah. they're like, hey, can you go on your lunch break? Do you think you can go to this audition? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I have so much work to do. Yeah. And I'm loyal to a fault. Okay. You know, I sort of put all my my desires on a back burner because I thought if I'm going to be an agent, if I was an actress, I want my agent to be working for me full time. Mm -hmm. None of this mm -hmm. half step and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I really did that. And then when um, my friend called about American Horror Story, I was like, okay, I'm not going to be on a Ryan Murphy show. I don't have any credits. I have like three credits to my name. They're like four years old. It's not going to happen. She's like, Chrissy, if I get the audition, just go. Will you go? And I'm like, okay, I'll go. 
If it's meant to be, fine. And then sure enough, I auditioned on tape and um, booked the job. Mm -hmm. And so I was gone for about four months and I told my clients like, hey, this is what's going on. I want to be completely honest. I'm going to have somebody fill in for me. And then once you have that taste of what you really want, you're like, how in the world? Did it kind of ding that dream back up in your heart? And then oh. you're, it's just your passions got going again. I mean, you're sitting on set with Jessica Lange, Kathy Bates, Angela yeah. Bassett, Sarah Paulson. I mean, can't <sighs> go back to the desk. You can't, it's you just, can't unring the bell. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, I oh. can't. Ooh. So I um, ended up wrapping, you know, it was just a five episode arc. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go back to the agent world and see yeah. what that's gonna mean. And I thought, okay, at some point I'm gonna have to step out on faith and belief in myself. Um, and I was taking acting classes at night and you know on the weekends, you know, doing whatever I could do when I wasn't working. And then of course, having just wrapped that, I thought, I, I can't do this. I'm gonna make sure that my clients are taken care of and that yeah. a new agent comes on board or if they wanna to go to another company. Um, and then I said, okay, uh, I'm gonna go on unemployment. So that's what stepping out in faith meant. Cause that's, that's what I was about to ask you. There are a lot of people that are working a job, but they feel like they're supposed to be in the fashion industry or yes. they feel like they're supposed to start a makeup line yeah. or whatever. And they just are like, I feel like I'm st supposed to start out in faith, but I need to be wise at the same time. Right. So how were you able to reconcile wisdom yeah. with faith? Well, I, I said, okay, what is it can, what, what, what can I afford? What is it that is possible? Okay. I moved in with a friend and she said, okay, pay me what you can. And then I know you're good for it because I know where you live and I've known you for this long. <laughs> Thank God for friends. Thank God for friends. Yeah. And um, so I did that. I went on unemployment and I had, you know, enough stored away of, of, as as they say, because uh, I've been working since I was 14. And um, so I was like, and I even felt guilty about that because uh, I was like, well, what about getting any auditions? Like, does mm -hmm, that mean I'm not mm -hmm. pursuing? All the what ifs. You know, all the yeah, what ifs. Yeah. And um, so a year passed and I thought, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Like, mm -hmm. maybe I should go back to agenting. I don't know. And then um, I, uh, my friend called and she said, okay, Dan Fogelman has an untitled pilot. Do you want to audition for it? I'm like, I'm going to audition for a pilot. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, because usually they go to people who have, you know, a list of credits and name experience. Name recognition. Name yeah. All of those things. And I said, let me read the script. And I was like, I, I think I am this girl. Really? I think I am this girl. Like, she's sort of the glue that holds her brothers together. She's living in a brother's shadow. She's She has aspirations of, you know, of having a different life than what we now know, mm -hmm. um, and all the guilt and the shame around her father's passing, um, and just holding on to all those things and not ever stepping out in mm. her power. And then I know what it's like to be the second fiddle. You know, she was her brother's assistant. I know about all those things, yep. about putting everybody else ahead of myself. Yeah. So, um, of course, uh, you know, we auditioned. I, oh, I got the audition. I went to the... You did? Yeah. We I, didn't know you got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I got the audition. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got the audition. And then that's a whole process. That's a whole, you know, I'm time for that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and then uh, I thought, okay. Uh, and interestingly, well, I jumped through a lot of hoops, and people don't know this story. I mean, I've written okay. a book, and it's in that, but. This is me. Yes, this, this is, is me. This is me is the yeah. name of the book, yeah. Yes. So, oh, goodness, I had the audition. I, I didn't think it was great. Although, when I was heading to the audition, it felt different. Like the birds were, it was like it was in a musical. Yeah. The birds were chirping, yeah. and like the sky was bluer. Something, something, something. was like, this right. is right. And the, yeah. Yes. And then I get to the room and I audition and I'm like, womp, womp, womp. I'm like, oh no. What did it sound like? I'm sorry, womp, what did it womp, womp. <laughs> I'm like, it's not going to happen for me. I should go back home. I should just teach preschool again. Like, I'm not going to be an actress. I'm terrible. And I got a callback. Imagine that. And I went to the callback and I remember nobody else for my role was in on the sign in sheet. I was like, oh, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, and I'm trying to <laughs> overanalyze everything as I do. I go in, and I have about a 45-minute callback, which is not yeah, normal. Yeah, that's a long time. And they're directing me, and they're like, oh, do you have a purse here? Can you get your purse? Can you act as if you're coming in the room uh, into your apartment? It's the scene where you know Toby drops me off of, after, our, or Kate drops Kate off after their first date, and he's like, gonna barge in the door. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. We went on a date, but you're not getting close to me. Like, are you yeah, kidding? Yeah. You're definitely not yeah. coming in my house. Yeah. So, um. It was a really cool experience, and I thought, okay, well, 
I'm going to do the best I can. And I did. And, you know, they were very complimentary. Yeah. But then it wasn't until two tests later yeah. where I actually booked the job. So some hoops to, and then, to jump through. This is us. And then this is us. <laughs> and how has, yeah. in a nutshell, your life changed as a result of not just a show, yeah. but the doggone number one show for all of these seasons? What has it meant to your life, not just in a um, superficial sense, because of right. course your, your moving about has had right. to change. Right. That as well, but I'm talking about how has it changed you. Still to come on The Breakthrough Interview. Why did you choose this project over the many others that I'm sure are also there for you to do? What drew you to Breakthrough Movie that's coming out in Easter? You know, several things. One, uh, first being that my mother went through a stroke prior to uh, the Smith family story even coming to fruition as a film. And almost verbatim did I say to my mother's doctors what Joy said to John's doctors. Really? Which was, we're only going to speak positive thoughts, and uh, we, we don't have a, we don't have the luxury for negative thinking. So if you're not here to help, you're hurting. <laughs> get get out. to stepping. Get yes, to stepping. Get out. Um, and I don't think that that it's a coincidence. And to honor the Smith family story, and then to honor my mom mm. in that regard was like. Yeah, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. Rise and shine. Breakfast is ready in 10 minutes. And don't make me come back up there. This is our town. It's a close-knit community, the kind of place where everyone knows everyone. Hi, Miss J. Hey, how are you girls? And we're always there for each other. Nice sermon, Pastor. What do you guys have on for the rest of the day? Well, John has a basketball game. Yeah, I've seen this guy hoop it up around here. This kid is so lit. Text your mom tomorrow and tell her when and where to pick you up. And uh, don't do anything stupid. Love you guys. Hey. <laughs> Boys, get off the ice. We're training for the Olympics, sir. Cindy. Come on. He's been underwater for more than 15 minutes. It's going to be a recovery, not a rescue. I got something. We got him. We've done everything medically possible. There's nothing more we can do. No. Please, God, send your Holy Spirit to save my son. A 14-year-old St. Charles boy who spent 15 minutes trapped underwater is continuing to fight for his life. I don't believe John will survive the night. You don't know my son. He is a fighter, so I need you to be the best for John, and you just let God do the rest. You are my pride and joy. I can't wait to see you shoot those baskets and run up and down the court again. The Smith family asked for one thing. Please pray for John. In the water that day, I was ready to give up, but then I hear this voice telling me, go back. Either I'm nuts or God's talking to you, but I don't believe in God. I believe, but maybe that only goes so far with something like this. I'm your pastor. I'm supposed to walk alongside you for as long as it takes. Did you see the Facebook page? It's gone viral. Call me. I hope he's gonna be okay. We're not gonna get through this alone. Whatever you have for me, for Brian, for John, Then this is us. And then this is us. <laughs> and how has, yeah. in a nutshell, your life changed as a result of not just a show, yeah. but the doggone number one show for all of these seasons. What has it meant to your life, not just in a um, superficial sense, because of right. course your, your moving about has had right. to change. Right. That as well, but I'm talking about how has it changed you. You know, um, my... Uh, I always had a, a strong work ethic, but um, I started showing up for myself more. Hmm. And that is something that I had not. What do you mean by that? So, you know, I lived in a lot of fear and always afraid of like, well, if I try acting and it doesn't work, then what does that mean for me? And what does that mean about me? Um, and then every day that I show up to set, still I'm nervous. Still yeah. I'm uncertain about 
what it's going to look like. And I've practiced and I've made a choice. And what if the director doesn't like it? And I take it personally and then I fall apart and I run away on my dreams because I'm so filled with fear. Mm -hmm. So it's just changed me in the sense of it doesn't have to be perfect. And you just have to show up and you have to walk through the fear. Girl, that's so good. That is so, because let me ask you this. Do you feel like you're looking at the other actors on a set or the movie that you've done at any point you're feeling that internal fear and you're looking at all the other actors and you're feeling like they've got it all together. Yes. It's only you that's feeling the fear. Yes. <laughs> but yes. really everybody Everyone. is wrestling with their own insecurities yeah. and their own fear. And I've found that to be true. Like we, we see people on a platform and we just think yeah. that they don't have the same wrestle we do. And really the people that we admire, it's not that they don't fear, it's that they do it afraid. Right. They just do it anyway. It's right. exactly what you're saying. Right. They just keep showing up. Well, you know, people like to, you know, I'm reminded often that fear is false evidence appearing real. Yes. And so I have to think, okay, Chrissy, this is your perception. You don't really know. And yeah, we're all going through it. We all want to be accepted and validated and, yep. and appreciated for what it is that we love to do. In so this how case, do you acting. keep it from mushrooming? I mean, do you, are you literally talking to yourself? Are you literally reminding yourself yeah. that my choices are valid choices? Yes. I'm going to do, I'm going to rest in the fact that God's given me a talent and a gift. Mm -hmm. I can receive instruction from this director. I can do, it's okay. Do you have to keep talking to yourself? Yeah. I, and I have to remind myself that nothing is personal. No. Yeah. That I'm a piece in a puzzle. That's right. What's my job? It's not job? all about you. Hello. Yes. Hello. Come on. Yes. It's <laughs> so not about me. Yeah. I'm a piece of the puzzle. Yeah. How do I complete the puzzle? How do I prepare? How do I show up for myself and for my cast and for my crew who show up every day? Um, How and, can I best contribute to right, their success? Right. Like you take your eyes off of yourself. Right. How can I best be helpful in right. this situation? And if the director sees something different or, or better fitting, for the scene, I'm gonna trust that they know and their vision and, and I want to be malleable. I want to be able to yeah. to push and pull and, and, and all yeah. of those things and have it. I mean, acting and, and so much of what we do is a collaborative art. Yeah. So I just wanna collaborate. Yeah, you that's know? so great. Yeah. I, I feel like that at this point in my, my own life and ministry and whatever, that there, you know, if you put yourself, if you let God put you in a position where you're in over your head and you know it and you just keep saying, okay, God, I trust, mm -hmm. I trust. Then you build enough of a track record that the next time it happens, even yeah. when you feel that same angst, you can look back on your history with God and go, you know what? I need to, I need to trust him with this next thing because right. he's proven to me that he's got time my back. Time and time again. Yeah. Yeah. So why now at the height, I'm sure you've got many, many more layers of heights to go there, oh. Chrissy. But here you are at a pretty good spot in yeah. your career. People know your name, they've seen your talent, they're enjoying your art, your craft, your dreams, what you've dreamt of since you were a young girl. Mm -hmm. Here it is, materializing. Yeah. And you get a call about a faith-based film, mm -hmm. a film where you're gonna have to pray to the Holy Spirit where Jesus' name is mentioned and glorified, where God does a miracle, where it's a, it's a film that's sort of outside of the bubble of Hollywood. Yeah. And you say, I'm gonna do this film. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. But I don't believe John will survive the night. If you have family and friends that you want to call to come to see John, now would be the time to do it. I've been told that you're the best, Dr. Garrett. I'm an expert in my field, ma'am. No, you're the best. World renowned, in fact. Or was I misinformed? No, you were not. I know that you don't know my son. But my John is a fighter and he doesn't give up. So I need you to go and be the best for John. Nothing less. And you just let God do the rest. Okay. Why 
did you choose this project over the many others that I'm sure are also there for you to do? What drew you to Breakthrough Movie that's coming out in Easter? You know, several things. One, uh, first being that my mother went through a stroke prior to uh, the Smith family story even coming to fruition as a film. And almost verbatim did I say to my mother's doctors what Joy said to John's doctors. Really? Which was, we're only going to speak positive thoughts. And uh, we, we, don't have a, the, we don't have the luxury of her negative thinking. So if you're not here to help, you're hurting. <laughs> get Get out. to stepping. Get yes. to stepping. Get out. Um, and I don't think that, that it's a coincidence. And to honor the Smith family story and then to honor my mom mm. in that regard was like, yeah, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And then I was attached to another project, which was so, I was grappling with, okay, what can I do both? Mm. And if I did both, I was going to have not even one day off for an entire year. And I thought, mm, I don't know, that's right, because I got to recharge the batteries. Yeah, because you then, still got that little series that you have to deal with. Right, you know, right, yeah. that little series. Yeah. And so, and, and I want to be 100% for whatever it is that I'm yeah. committed to doing. And so that other project fell through. It did. It fell through. Huh. And, you know, I was talking to my, my best friend and I, we, we obviously we chat, we both, we pray together, we um, are very close, and he's like, you know what, Chrissy, it, this is, for, this is on, for a reason, this is happening on purpose, and I'm like, mm. yeah, you're absolutely right. Isn't that something how disappointments can actually be appointments? They can actually be oh, the yeah. road opening up for what God actually has for us. Right, those unanswered prayers. Yeah. You know, um, and we think that we know best and that we know That's what right. we want. And then we look back in hindsight and we're like, God, <gasps> thank you that you said yes. no. Yes. Thank you for the no. <laughs> yes. 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 Man, if he would have given me everything I begged him for, I'd be in so much trouble oh, right now. I would not be in a good way. Girl. Yeah. It'd be a mess. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, you know, um, that and also, you can't help but be changed. I mean, I knew about the story through the news, but you can't help be changed after you read the script and you think, this is not some fictional character. This is a real life true story. I've met of, the boy with my own, I've seen him with my own eyes. He's like alive. <laughs> Listen. And medical documentation that says he was dead. Right. Brought back to life. Right. Uh, I played the role of the mother. I know the Smith family and Pastor Jason, and I still feel that way. Like, yes. how, c huh? Um, and, you know, also as an actress, you want to challenge yourself and you want to be a conduit of, mm. of this beautiful message and bringing it to thousands of people because it's going to change people's lives. How just can as, it not? How can it not? Just as it changed every single person's life, you know, that was, that was directly affected by yeah. it. So. Do you believe God differently than you did before this film? I mean, has it made you pray different or has it made you expect differently um, in terms of your relationship with the Lord? I think it, it did make me pray differently in the sense of, I pray more often mm. and um, with more intention mm. um, and not about me, but about what it is I'm supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it kind of broadens our perspective of prayer, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It becomes less about, less yeah. about, you know, Lord, just give me what I want. Right. And more about Lord, like, what is your will? That's what I we always want say. your will for me. Yes. What is your will? Yeah. That will um, not mine be done. I, always, always, always. So the first scene that you filmed, first day on set, it, 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 I found out last night from talking to you that it is, <laughs> the first scene you filmed is my favorite scene in the entire movie. Oh, because I looked at that scene and I'm like, Chrissy Metz is an actress. <laughs> that girl right there <laughs> is fierce. You. And now to know that you did that on the first day, yeah. when you're just kind of coming in. Okay, so it's the scene where you are praying for God to breathe life back into your son. And yeah. you say, Holy Spirit, come and breathe life into my son. Yeah. We've done everything medically possible. There's nothing more we can do. <laughs> no. Please, God, send your Holy Spirit to save my son. Please, God, send your Holy Spirit to save my son. I want to ask you um, about your own relationship with the Holy Spirit, um, what that looks like, what, how that's developed through the years. 
um, just the nuances of your relationship with God's spirit living in you and how you see that outworked, you know, the expression of God's spirit in us, yeah. peace and patience and joy and all those things, the fruit of God's spirit from Galatians 5 is what it's called. Yeah. So what, t just talk to us a little bit about that. Well, faith has always been something very important to me. My grandmother instilled that in us very early on. And because I was searching and looking for something, I'd be the teenager at church by herself. Cause I was like, really? Uh, yeah. I'm like, how? What, uh, what do I do? Like, I need to understand it and also understand what it is that I'm intended to do. Mm. And I always felt like there was a bigger picture and that some of that still small voice was like, just hang on, just hang on, just hang on. Mm. And I went through a pretty uh, tumultuous childhood. My, you know, my mom remarried and I, um, it, it's so interesting because my stepfather, who I love dearly and mm. I'm so grateful, um, he was more of a father to me than my biological father, but it was an abusive relationship. Mm. But I'm able to grieve that and then process that and then forgive him. And so that is a really big deal because... Listen, forgiveness is a miracle. Forgiveness yeah. is a work of God's spirit in yes. us, I believe. We can't yes. forget, especially when someone's wronged us so severely. Absolutely. That hardness of heart really can only be melted by the Holy right, Spirit. Yeah. Right. So and that's evidence of his work in absolutely. our lives. And that would those things would continue to happen. Like the more that I would let it go or forgive or understand, mm -hmm. um, love mm -hmm. instead of being loved, you know, you know all, all all of those those ways that it worked personally through through me. And then how I'm honored by doing that. Yeah. And having the life that I love, but also doing the work of what I'm intended to do. So, yep. I mean, it constantly shows up in my friends and my family and yeah. my blessings. That's um, amazing. Yeah. I'm so grateful that you're a part of this film for many reasons. I've seen it a couple times now and it's, it's spectacular oh. and people are going to um, be encouraged. Their faith is going to be strengthened. They're going to be, so. yeah, they're going to start believing God for their impossible stuff. I think, you know, I they're going to so. say, well, my marriage can be restored then, or, you know, my kid right. can come back home or whatever. So I think that's going to be great. I want to ask you a couple more things before we finish. And one is that this year, I was telling you earlier, there's another faith-based film coming out in August, which yeah. is so cool, Overcomer. And um, in this one year, there are going to be at least these two, probably some other faith-based films. And people are going to see these films in mass now. Like I can only imagine was out last year. Then there was War Room and Courageous and all these movies. And I mean, they're, they're getting toward a $100 million box office kind of representation. Yeah. And so Hollywood's kind of going, what? What, what's happening mm -hmm. here? These little faith-based independent films sure. are drawing the attention of Lionsgate and Sony and Fox and all of these big industry names. And yeah. why do you think that is, that this is an important time in the industry where faith matters and is working on screen? Well, I think that while you know works of art should be created in every way, I think that if you can create a work of art based on a true story or something that is inspirational, that derives hope, that reminds you of our purpose and our path, mm. you, it's like you're getting the best of both worlds. Yeah. And that there's so many people that are hungry for that. They are. You know, especially now. It's very timely because we're going through a lot. There's a <laughs> lot of yes. turmoil, a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow. and. Um, we're all looking for something. Mm -hmm. And so whether, you know, we're an executive or, you know, we're from a small town mm. and all the, you know, in between, we're all the same. Yeah. We're all the same. All the same. Yeah. All the same. How yeah. important is it that this film is opening up Easter weekend? Oh, you know, how perfect. The, <laughs> you know, the, the, the season of, of, you know, rebirth and renewal and... And resurrection. And resurrection. I mean, this is a resurrection story if there ever was one. Uh, I mean, you said it. Yeah, <laughs> yes, absolutely. absolutely. What's next for you? What's well, next? Well, um, how I can think, we be cheering for you and celebrating uh, well, you, you know, and looking um, forward to the future with you? Yeah. So Diane Warren wrote a song, "I'm Standing with You," yeah. that she was inspired to write from, of course, the movie from the Smith story, and I sing that that song on our soundtrack. And oh, do you? Yes. Hmm. It's called, yes. It's okay. Titled, I'm standing with you. I'm and, standing um, with you. Okay. Uh, you know, music was always my first love and something that always sort of comforted me. Yeah. And now I'm going to pursue it uh, for Chrissy. Not let's hope somebody shows up and, you know, it would be great if they love the music, but I just want to go on that journey because I never have been. Good for you. Yeah. Just and, another sphere of you know, 
Okay, step Why not? out and see what happens. Why not? So you mean recording? Yes. So I've, I've uh, done some songwriting in Nashville with a couple of uh, great songwriters. I know. I know a great songwriter. Oh? Yeah. Oh? His name's Anthony. Oh, he well, learned everything he knows from his older sister is all oh, I'm perfect. saying. <laughs> I, I've heard about his older sister. I heard she's like... Little angel. She I. Yeah, she she I. She I. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna try maybe an EP or you know just a some That's personal so cool. music. That yeah. is so great. It's cathartic as well. Yeah. And, um, maybe eventually produce and I'd love to write an episode of This Is Us. So come on, girl, you, know, you better write and direct you know. and produce and sing. <laughs> I don't know about directing, but I'll start with writing and producing. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Listen, yeah. we're celebrating you. I celebrate oh, you, one sister you. to another. I want you to know that we're cheerleading your success. Thank you. We're celebrating you. We affirm you. You freed a lot of us up. <sighs> Like we watch you do what you do, not just as Kate, but I'm talking about as Chrissy. And knowing that you've pressed through all this fear and insecurity to do it, and that you keep venturing into new efforts, mm. pushing past new layers of fear and insecurity to do it, you need to know you're freeing a lot of us up to say, you know what? If that girl from Florida can do it. That's right. Then I can do it too. That's right, now that you got me crying up in here. I'm serious, thank you. Yeah, this really means a lot to me. Thank you. I'm thank grateful. you so much. Good to talk thank to you. You too, <laughs> you too, thank you. Oh dear. <laughs>